Some months ago, I talked about my experience with 3D printer slicers over the past eight years. One that I did not cover in that video is Simplify 3D, a paid slicer that was first launched in 2013 that at one point was praised by many as being the best slicer out there. The main reason that I did not cover it is that there had been no updates in over three years, and many speculated that the project or the slicer had been abandoned. Well, two weeks ago, the 10-month-old Fabulu article was proven accurate when the long-awaited and often memed about version 5 was officially launched. Simplify reached out to me about a month ago and provided me with an early copy of V5, so I've had some time to play around with it. So in today's video, we'll be diving into Simplify 3D. We'll cover why I never purchased it many years ago, my thoughts on the current status of V5, and lots of just additional thoughts along the way. So with all that being said, and without further ado, do, let's get right into today's video. With so many just getting into 3D printing in the past couple of years, I feel like we need to rewind to give some context. The year is 2014, and between work, my birthday, and Christmas, I was able to scrape together just enough to buy my first 3D printer for $500, a complete bargain for the time. This printer, the DaVinci 1.0, was locked down to a proprietary slicer, but thanks to a little bit of hacking, I was able to flash the board, opening it up to be used with third-party slicers. The only issue was that third-party slicers, although better than the XYZ Wear slicer, were also not very good. Many of the 3D printers at the time out there used some form of a proprietary slicer, and the three main ones I remember were Slick3R, Repetier Host, and Simplify 3D. Based on everything I saw at the time, I would have loved to have picked up Simplify 3D, but I had very little disposable income, and spending $150 on a slicer just wasn't in my cards. Out of the other options, I ended up jumping into Repetier Host, which became my daily driver for the next three years. I would consider those years the glory days of Simplify Simplify 3D. They were constantly pushing out updates and improvements and adding a lot of new features along the way. If you think supports are tough now, back then supports were an absolute nightmare in 3D printing. Slicers just did not have a really great way of handling them, and Simplify 3D definitely had advanced support generation and was one of the big features that a lot of people really enjoyed in the software. I had considered getting Simplify 3D a few times over those years, but I had become so accustomed to my workflow and Repetier Host, and in generally just a pretty stubborn person, and I couldn't get myself to jump ship. As time went on, Simplify 3D began to become slower and slower with releases, and new slicers had come up and become more popular, like Cura and the Prusa edition of Slick 3R. This had a pretty big breaking point with the release of Simplify 4.1.2 in April of 2019, which ended up being the last release of the software up until this recent one, over three and a half years later. There had been mentions of V5 coming out years ago, but the team pretty much went dark and there haven't been any updates for as long as I can remember. They still posted on Twitter small 3D printing tips and things about their slicer, but completely ignored any comments or feedback about the software or when any form of update was gonna be coming out. Over the last three and a half years, desktop 3D printing has evolved a ton. Thanks to both hardware and firmware improvements, we're able to print much faster and get high quality prints at a lower price point than ever imaginable just a few years ago. Free open source slicers have also come a really long way. Cura has had many feature updates over the years and their new Arachne engine with adaptive line width has been a major advancement. Slick 3R Prusa Edition has since become Prusa Slicer as we know it and was completely overhauled with lots of great features like model painting and paint on supports. Super Slicer also came out which gives you even more control of your printer and has been my go-to slicer for clippered printers for some time now. We also have Bamboo Studio, which has been a great slicer with a ton of exciting features like hybrid supports and the new SVG to mesh conversion. Idea Maker is another slicer that many have gone to that were originally using Simplify 3D thanks to its familiar user interface. Throughout this time, Simplify 3D sat, and with every update to these other slicers, it began to lose more and more of its edge. On top of that, the lack of any updates or responses left many of the loyal customers rightfully feeling disappointed and upset. Some have stuck with it, but many have jumped ship along the way. Which brings us to present date. Simplify V5 is here and the responses have been a completely mixed bag. I've seen some excitement, some disappointment, lots of memeing, and really everything else in between. Joel, who had used Simplify 3D for many years, did a first look video on launch day where he went through some of the new features and after this long wait was not wowed. 
Prior to Simplify reaching out and providing me with a copy of V5, I had had minimal exposure to the slicer before. I'd seen lots of videos on it, I used it a couple of times from friends that had the slicer, but most of my experience has been just this past month diving in and seeing what the slicer is all about. My first impression when jumping in was, wow, this looks really similar to the Simplify 3D that I remember many years ago, which I think came as a shock to many. Although I was anticipating a pretty big UI rework, I feel like the reason they may have kept it was for users who have stuck with the software for nearly a decade now. They are super familiar with the layout and interface and the way things work, and completely swapping it out just might not have made sense to them. Aside from looking through the new mentioned features, I did quite a bit of digging into other Simplify 3D content to help me get a better feel for what the Simplify V4.1.2 was like in comparison to this new Simplify V5. Grant from 3D Musketeers did a great video about a year ago diving into the ins and outs of Simplify, which allowed me to see the menus and settings from 4.1.2 and compare them to V5. I've used and tested out a lot of 3D printer slicers over the years, and I have enjoyed using Simplify 3D this past month. The interface and workflow are quite nice. I really like the preview and simulation page. And although with Clipper I don't use it as much, I also appreciate the 3D printer control being baked in. This is something that I've missed from leaving Repetier host and going back to using Pronterface when I need to do some control locally on the printer just sort of feels archaic. Looking through the highlighted features as well as the changelog, there are a lot of things in here that Simplify has been missing for some time that current users are going to be really happy to have. However, what I do not see is anything that I would consider groundbreaking or anything that I feel like will give Simplify 3D a serious edge on the other slicers that are out there, which I think after this major extended delay, if we could even call it that, a lot of people were anticipating. The majority of these new features have been available in one way, shape, or form in the open source slicers, and they won't cost you anything. The current price for Simplify 3D V5 for a new user is $200, up $50 from what it used to cost, which compared to the only other paid FDM slicer I know of, like G Pro at 40 euros, is very steep. They did tell me that anyone that purchased V4 in the past year would be bumped to V5 for free, and all users on V4 would have sort of a limited time discount that where they can upgrade if they wanted to, but I don't know the specifics of that discounting. In my opinion, spending $200 on Simplify 3D V5 in its current state makes little sense for the majority of people that I know that are 3D printing. The free slicers are really good, and the majority of these features can be found in those other slicers. However, 3D printing is not a one shoe fits all and it is a major reason why I love the technology so much. For some, the interface, features, and layout of Simplify 3D might be the perfect solution. And if they're running a print farm or printing for a business, the $200 might be a moot point. The 3D printing professor, who had also been a Simplify user, put out a video with his thoughts on the V5 release as well as some ideas for the slicer. One thing that he talked about that I never really analyzed was that just about all 3D printer slicers out there are made by a hardware manufacturer. Out of all the slicers that I've used or mentioned, the only ones that are not are Simplify 3D, Repetier Host, and Super Slicer, which is a fork of Prusa Slicer. Many of these slicers are open source, but if these companies were not getting funding through their hardware sales, I would be really curious to see what happens to their development. Overall, I've enjoyed using Simplify V5 this past month and plan on doing quite a bit more testing. Whenever I'm talking to a company, I always try to give them feedback, be it positive or negative. I feel like if I don't, I'm doing a major disservice to both the community as well as the company. My biggest request to them with the launch of V5 was transparency. For those who feel burned or that it is too little too late, your feelings are completely justified based off of the past three and a half years of neglect. Their response to me was that they will be more active and engaged moving forward and that quicker updates to Simplify 3D are coming. Based off of the fact that it took three and a half years, I don't exactly know what quicker updates in entails, but that is what I was told. Only time will tell as Simplify 3D is able to build back the trust that has been broken. In addition to transparency and updates, there are a few other things that I would love to see. The first is a roadmap. Now, I'm not expecting any sort of dates really on this, but just a general idea of what sort of features are being worked on and what direction the company is planning on taking the software. The second is is a trial. For as long as I can remember, they've had a two week satisfaction guarantee where basically you pay for the slicer. If you're not happy with it, you email them in, they'll revoke the license and they will refund you. And although this does work, it's less than ideal and many aren't going to want to fork up $200 just to figure out whether they do or don't like the slicer. A no strings attached 
two week trial to download it and see what it's all about, I think would be a really good thing to have. The last big thing that I saw off the bat when creating a printer profile is that they did not have Clipper or RepRap firmware there. Talking to them, I was told that they use Clipper with Simplify in their office that you can upload directly from the slicer to a Clipper printer and that all of the Clipper commands would have no issues in their G code. But the fact that it's missing from the ability to create a printer just feels odd. And given the current climate and popularity of both RepRap and Clipper firmware, I just feel like that should have been an obvious thing to include in the slicer. I would love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you were an existing Simplify customer or are a current Simplify customer, let me also know what your thoughts specifically on V5 are. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos we make a video every single week so there's always fresh content coming your way and if you do want to support the channel furthermore i'll have links down below in the description over to our patreon where there are some really awesome rewards huge thank you to all of our existing patreon supporters i appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what i love which is making content for you all to enjoy on that note this has been Diana from modbot i look forward to seeing you guys in my next video peace guys